God, this is already the end of the third week, right? I mean, what do we have? Is it like 16 weeks or 15 weeks total for a semester or something like that? So we're, uh, we're, we're moving right along. Uh, we're, um, we've, ba we've basically finished chapters one and two uh, in terms of what we're going to talk about in class. Um, of course, the heavily, let's say, implied thought behind all this is that you guys are kind of reading up and falling through on things, too. Uh, there are a couple sections that we'll completely skip over, and um, I'll, uh, I should, I'll, if somebody reminds me later on, then I'll kind of post the stuff that we're not going to be doing or the stuff that I wouldn't expect. That uh, I wouldn't expect you guys to need to read on your own. Um, but after we finish chapter four here, we're going to go back to chapter three. Uh, so that's that's kind of the only skipping around we really do. After that, we'll kind of follow along with uh, with the textbook, and um, and then we'll just uh, continue on from there. But uh, let's see here. So um, let's see. Last time we were uh, introduced naming. We didn't do all the naming yet, just because it's one of those things where if I uh, do all the naming at once, then um, you guys like you know start thinking about bringing pitchforks and torches to class and just coming after, you know, coming after me. So uh, you know we kind of dole it out a little bit here. You know how it is, spread the misery around, just like resonance structures, right? So there you go. All right, tied back into chemistry. That's how life works. Okay. By the way, so this is completely random, but I was eating breakfast and I was reading, you know, the, the stuff that pops up on my news feed there. And they awarded the Ig Nobel Prizes. You guys heard of these? Mm -hmm. Right? They're like the the awards that are given for, you know, research that um, the way that they say it is research that makes you laugh but then makes you think, which is their way of saying like, you know, the their you know, research that is dumb. <laughs> but not supposedly, I guess, is what it is. Anyway, I, I don't know why this is popping to mind. I guess I don't want to talk about organic chemistry yet. So one of the winning one of the winning prizes was about research done about what happens when you hang rhinoceroses upside down, right? You guys ever thought about that? Me neither, right? So, <laughs> so but anyway, the, the point is, right? You know, if you go if you go read about some of these, the 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 word in chemistry was measuring, right, they went through and they took air samples from movie theaters, and depending on the genre of the movie, could they tell, like, was there responses in the way that, what, what people breathed out, right? So if it was a tense movie, were there different chemicals in the air and that kind of stuff? Do you guys ever think about that? Nope, me neither, right? So uh, if only you had thought of that, the, the award was a $10 million Zimbabwe counterfeit bill is what they got paid, so, <laughs> so there, there's not even a cash prize if you come up with your own research about hanging giraffes upside down or something, so, um, but anyway, um, that has no point on anything that we're going to talk about today, but I just wanted to share that with you guys, okay? Using your brain and seeing and seeing what you can come up with can even lead you to internet fame that a professor reads over his breakfast in five minutes, right, so, goals. All right, we, um, uh, last time we had finished the uh, naming, I think is where we left off, and we had started to talk a little bit about how naming relates back to the structure itself with respect to how can we figure out uh, conformational isomers, constitutional isomers, whether the things are just drawn differently uh, um, or whether they're the same molecule, right? And so the, the point that we said is one way of differentiating if we have different molecules or not is just to assign the name to the molecules themselves, right? So if you have the same name for two things, they're the exact same molecule, no matter how they're drawn, right? And, but we have to kind of expand upon this a little bit. This is gonna be one of these points where if you're um, struggling with visualization or struggling with kind of uh, spatial reasoning, these kind of, this is where it's gonna be a little bit tricky for you guys, okay? Huh? Yeah, I mean, it's nice. Let's see, that's less grading for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so what I'm saying is if you guys want to start bringing your model kits or this kind of stuff, remember, I don't care. You guys can use them on the exam. It's not a big deal, right? So it's up to you guys what you need to do. Um, yeah, we don't do that here, so never mind. I was about to, but yeah, don't worry about it. Um, but anyway, so if you guys want to bring your uh, uh, model kits, that will be something that's just fine. So that's how we're going to kind of lead into this. How or why do molecules move around? Okay. So the, the, the why we talk a little bit about in Gen Chem, and we're going to bring this back in as we go to 
uh, our reactions, okay? And the how is what we're going to uh, uh, kind of look a little bit more deeply in uh, today, right? So, uh, but anyway, before we before we get into that, let's uh, let's spend a little bit of time in prayer here and um, see if we can just focus ourselves a bit, or myself, I should say. Uh, but Lord, we just thank you. Uh, we thank you for another day and uh, just another chance, another opportunity, and just uh, just the ability to get up and get going, and just another day that you bless us, Lord. Uh, we know that each breath we take and each each step that we take, Lord, is a blessing from you. And uh, we pray that we don't take these things for granted. Um, we pray that we use everything you've given us, you know, from the time today to the friends around us to, you know, the, the brain that we have for everything, Lord, that you've put before us. We pray that we can use this towards you. And we pray that we turn our eyes to you, Lord, and just uh, humble ourselves and ask you how we can work uh, for you, Lord. You know, teach us to be good and faithful servants, Lord. Uh, help us to use our abilities for your glory and for your sake. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, draw ethane for me. With all its three-dimensional glory. Prefix for two, ain indicating alkanes, which means carbon carbon single bonds. Got it? Draw it in its full three dimensional glory with all the hydrogens. Good, all done. Yes. How many of you guys got exactly that? Give or take. Okay, a couple of you guys. Everyone else was wrong. No, that's good. You should have raised your Why did you raise? No, it's not exactly the same, but it is the same. Hmm, okay. How many of you guys got something like that? A couple of you guys did that, huh? Some of you guys are... Probably somewhere in between, I imagine. What's the relationship between those two? Are they both ethane? <laughs> yeah. Are they resonance structures? Mm -hmm. No. What are they, though? They're the same. It's just a perspective change. It's not a perspective change. Yep. How does cis and trans resonance? Cis and trans comes into play when we have a locked set of atoms. And we'll talk about that. We will get into that, but not in this case. And it's not a conformational change. And the reason why is because the hydrogens are changing position too, right? For a conformation, we change the position. The atoms stay the same. Got it? What's changing as I move from the one to the left to the right? The position of the hydrogens. You guys with me on this? Here's what I'm talking about, right? So if we just label this one as red, okay? And we'll just arbitrarily, arbitrarily label this one as green. Good. So taking a look at this bond in the middle. 
if I take this bond in the middle and I'm gonna spin it around, okay? So imagine, okay? And it makes that noise, okay? In case you guys are wondering, right? Mm -hmm. Got it. You guys see what I mean with this? I'm taking this and I'm rotating that middle bond. Is this a valid thing to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, any single bond can rotate freely. Okay? So <coughs> if you have ethane in a jar, okay, at a specific temperature, that, <coughs> that bond is just spinning around like crazy. All right? But these aren't equal. One of these is not the same as the other. One of these is better than the other. One of these is more stable than the other. One of these is preferred over the other. One of them's lower energy than the other. That's kind of all the same way of saying, hey, we need to figure out what the difference is between these. And it says, right, where do molecules like to hang out and why? To do that, right, to understand these conformational isomers, right, or rotational isomers, okay, we're going to have to change our perspective on things, okay? Here's how we're going to do it. Right now, okay, right now, I don't like to turn my back on you guys, but right now we're facing towards the board, okay? We are seeing these molecules from the top down here, okay? What we're going to do is basically have to rotate our eyeballs 90 degrees to where we are looking from the side here, okay? And we are looking down the axis of that carbon-carbon bond. You guys with me? So I'm looking here, and essentially what I'm doing is I'm walking myself over here and looking down that carbon-carbon bond. You guys with me on this? What we're going to be doing is something called a Newman projection, okay? Any W-M-A-N-N, or is it just one N? I forget if it's one or two N's. Let this for a second. I think it's two N's, but... Oh, just one N, sorry. Okay. Any W-M-A-N, Newman projections. Good. Newman projections are the way that we have of assessing the relative stability of different rotations of a molecule. So watch. Um, yeah, let's do this here. So I'm going to come back and uh, I'm going to put some color with everything. This is going to help us out here. So I'm going to make this one yellow. Get something to erase. Okay. Good. I'm going to make this one black. All right. We can do green in the back there. Let's see. Um, <laughs> orange, maybe I guess. And we'll leave that one blue. Okay? You guys with me? I'm just color coding the hydrogen. It's going to make it a little bit easier to kind of see what we're up to. So now I'm moving my way over here and I'm looking down that carbon carbon bond. If I look at an atom, what do I see? I see a giant capital letter C floating around in space, huh? Is that what it is? Yes, of course, right? What do I see when I look at an atom? A sphere surrounded by little spheres. Just a sphere. Got it? So. What I'm going to do is represent, um, I'm going to represent the first carbon that I see, this one here, right? I'm going to represent it with the world's best circle that I drew. Got it? Perfect. Everybody with me on this? I'm just looking at that carbon. Let's think about this. I'm looking at this carbon. What is directly behind it? Another carbon, okay? This is one of the tricky things everyone forgets about Newman projections. When I see that circle in the middle of a Newman projection, I'm representing two atoms. Do those atoms always have to be carbons? No. no. They're just what? Atoms. atoms. Okay. Everybody with me on that so far? Now, what you do when you change perspective is you have to orient yourself somewhere. All right? So we start at one place and work our way out from there. So I'm here looking down at that front carbon. I have three hydrogens that I have to account for. Everybody with me on that? What are they? The red, the yellow, and the black. Got it? So if I'm over here facing this direction, I have things that are going to be up, to the right, and to the left. 
Everybody's still with me on this, okay? So we're gonna have three positions where we have to put things. My hydrogen in red is gonna be the one that's facing up. Does everybody kind of follow along with me so far still? Okay, I'm looking at this, right? I'm looking here, that hydrogen's gonna be up. Good. Let me change colors. This hydrogen in black, looking at it from the front, right? Looking at it from the front, it's coming out at the board towards you, okay? If I move myself over to the side here, where is that hydrogen now? It's gonna be coming out to the right, got it? If that's out to the right, hydrogen yellow off to the other side there. With me? Everybody kind of seeing what I'm doing? Okay. So that is dealing with the carbon in the front. Now we have the carbon in the back. Let me show you guys something first. I'm gonna have you come back and see if you can fill in the rest of it. If I ask you guys to draw a cube, okay? If I ask you guys to draw a cube, we have to take some, let's say, uh, contrivances to define perspective, right? Guys with me on this? Everyone looks at that and says, that's the best cube I've ever seen. Very symmetric, mm -hmm. right? Okay. One of the things that we do when we try and show distance and perspective is we leave off the other, you know, we leave off the other lines in the back there, right? Or we might even dot them in sometimes is how you see it, okay? To show perspective, to show the front and the back of a Newman projection, what we do um, is just draw the lines coming off of the circle rather than going to the middle here like we see in the front. Everybody with me on that? That just helps us to fix what's on the front and what's on the back. Good? All right, so we have three positions here. We have three hydrogens there. See if you guys can fill in which hydrogen goes where, okay? On the, on the carbon that's in the back. You, we, yeah, that's a good question, right? If I'm picking, right, I'm defining where we're looking from. Yeah. You can't move once you're looking from over there. Otherwise, nothing's going to make sense, right? Yeah. So once you orient yourself, always stay in that position until you're done assessing what you need to assess from there. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah, and like for this, we're not taking into effect the like, change in the bond yet? Not yet. We're only looking at that one on the left. Yeah. yeah. What's up? If there's a, if you're looking at it and there's two different like molecules or atoms bonded and one yep. of them has a larger atomic radius, do you have to show that? No. Yeah, I mean there there's some. Uh, what do we say here? Some uh, liberties we take, I guess, with this, right? I have to define where we're looking down, right? But we, I mean, we not we don't have to represent every single thing. What we're trying to analyze is why the conformation is. Not necessarily do, does an atomic radius make a difference in this. Does, it, does that make sense? Like it just, it, that, that's important, but not for what we're trying to assess here. So we're just trying to draw something to help it make it a little bit easier for us. Yeah? Why is the orange state? Why is what? The orange hydrogen. Where is it or why is it? Why? That's right. You talking about this one or this one here? Yeah, because that's orange, right? Yeah, this this one is orange, yeah. Here. Okay, but the one you drew is red. I thought it was orange. I was like, why is the orange one? No, no, no. It's that's I don't know, maybe it maybe it's from right. is that is that easier if I zoom in on it then? Or? Okay. Yeah, sorry, I don't need it. Yep, yep. Okay. Alright, let me zoom out so I try and catch everything on there. Okay. All right, let's start, with, uh, let's start with the green one. Where's my green one? Left, right, or bottom? Bottom. bottom? bottom, okay. Let me pause here for a second. Going back to what we did at the front. Which, at, which hydrogen did I start with at the front? Why? Because it's on the same side. Aha, 
Okay? So when you change perspective, it is easy for us to manipulate things in two-dimensional space. Us living in three-dimensional space, it's easy to manipulate anything that's a dimension lower than what we are, right? Everybody with me on this? You guys ever, uh, I don't know if you guys talk about this in philosophy or whatever, it's an interesting argument, right? You know, they're like, no, it doesn't sound interesting. Huh? <laughs> it actually is, right? There's a fantastic book called The Physics of uh, Christianity, which uh, kind of takes an approach to some of the miracles of Jesus. It's not trying to take away from the miraculous side of things. It's just how does how is science represented in some ways in the scriptures, what it's talking about. Yeah? Isn't that basically the... Uh being able to manipulate something in dimension below you. Isn't yes. That basically, the uh, entire plot of the regular time. I never read that book. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to defer to defer to your expertise in that. Everybody with me though. What I do, okay. What I do when I start to move myself around a molecule, I orient myself on what's on the plane that I'm dealing with. I orient myself with what is not the wedge and dash. I orient myself with what is in the plane. Why? It's just easiest for me to do that. Does that mean that's the way you guys should do it? No, I don't care how you guys do it, okay? Is that what I found easy for me? Sure. Am I teaching you guys the, the Dr. H's way of doing organic chemistry? Yes. How many of you guys are also Dr. H out there? Let's see. Uh, one, thank you. Okay, I got my doppelganger. I knew, I knew they existed somewhere. <laughs> okay, do you guys get the point that I'm making? Do I care how you guys do it? Only to the point that I want you guys to get it right all the time. Okay, if you're trying to do what I'm doing, you're like, this guy's nuts. That's a fair thought, okay? But find what works for you. Okay, if you want to start with the dash or whatever it is, just, just do that. I don't care, but just get it right. For me, it's easiest to orient myself based off of what's in the plane as it is drawn, and then pick that, okay? The other way of doing this is finding what's up or down to begin with, okay? And then moving your way off of that also. It's easy for us to think about up or down. Sometimes it's difficult to think about what's left or right because those are the wedges and the dashes that are coming out of there, okay? All right, so green one, yeah, what's up? Uh, the circle again and how it represents both carbons? We're looking down a, an axis that has two, uh, looking down a bond that has two carbons. Okay. So you see one in the back, the assumption is that the other one's directly behind it. And that would work if we had yeah, two carbons as well? Any atoms there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, where is my blue hydrogen? Left or right? Left. Left. I won't ask you guys about the orange one there. <laughs> guys with me on this? Does it now make sense why this is the better structure? Don't say yes, unless you read ahead. Who read ahead? No one. What's wrong with you guys, huh? <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so we can't answer yet why one is better than the other. We're getting there. What we need to do first is learn how to draw these and how to interpret these, okay? Everybody with me on this? Okay, here's what I want you guys to do next. I want you guys to walk to the other side of the molecule, all right? Now draw what you see from there, okay? And if you guys don't have color or whatever, just name, you know, number them one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever it is, right? Hydrogen one, hydrogen two, whatever it might be. Otherwise, you just put hydrogens on there, like, hey, this is easy.
<laughs> it's a good way of labeling it, right? <laughs> All right. Looks like you guys are following along. Does take artistic talent. Okay, so looking over here now, right? Remember, I was looking here. Now I'm standing on this side and looking down, right? The, the stuff in the middle is not going to change. We're just going to see one circle eclipsed by the other one there, right? One carbon eclipsed by the other. I find myself the thing that's in the plane, okay? Where is that green hydrogen? Up, down, left, right? Down. Down, down right? Straight down. Everybody with me on that one? Everyone seeing this? Yes? I hope. Okay. What about my blue hydrogen? Where are we going with that? Right. Up and to the right. Good. So we are here, right? My hydrogen is into the plane of the board, right? When I, when I change 90 degrees, it's still in to my right here. You guys with me on that? Yes. If it's coming out, right, we'd be, okay, yeah, it, it, I, I get it, it's tricky. Okay, if I have that, then I can fill in my orange. Good? Mm -hmm. All right, in the back. Red, yellow, black, where are we? Up, left, right. What about for the red one, where are we? It's still up. That is up. I like the way you said that, it's still up. That's a good point. Nothing moved, only moved it, right? What's up? They're all in the same spot except what, which lines connect to the middle, which ones connect to the circle, let's look at them. Mm -hmm. But they're all in the same position. Yep. Because did the atoms move? No. no. What moved? Oops, that's broken. <laughs> all right, I got a little bit ahead of myself there. All right, okay. Aha, I changed it and broke me from a different perspective. <laughs> An optical illusion. Right. You suddenly see more electrons. Yeah. I dropped the clock. Yeah, that's it. I'm done with this crap. <laughs> you guys with me on this? Feel pretty comfortable? You guys see what I'm going to ask you to do next? No. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, after you turn in the quiz. No, actually, before. Then I don't have to grade it, right? Gee, what am I Don't do that. Okay. So what am I going to ask you to do next here? Remember the question was, why is one of these better than the other? So obviously what we need to do is look at the other one. other one. Got it? Now I want to pause here for just a second. I'm going to tell you something obvious. And you guys are going to, it's fine, right? I'm not trying to, like, I always hesitate when I say stuff to you guys like this because you're like, I think Dr. H thinks I'm dumb. I don't, okay? I'm telling you, look, there is a forest and I'm showing you the trees right now. And you guys are going to come to my office later. I'm like, do you see the trees? Like, oh, I forgot about them, right? Listen, in most of organic chemistry, remember, I told you there isn't a single good answer, okay? What you need to do is look at all of the answers and say which one is the best one. We need to stop and assess. Dr. H, I'm stuck. Can I, should I add this reagent or should I add that reagent? My usual question is, show me both and tell me which one is better. Got it? The whole point is you guys need to write out your two options. Assess what you have and then say, okay, one of these has to be better than the other. Okay? That's the trick to doing organic chemistry. Don't be shy to write things out. You might even put wrong things in your paper. <gasps> but then just show me the right one. Say, this one is a better one and you circle it or whatever on your exam. Right? This one's a better one because blah, 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 blah. And you go through for your explanation. Okay? Sound good? Okay, so let's take a look at the second one. I'm gonna zoom out for a second and just uh, move this one down here. We just kind of separate things out, okay. All right, so let's move our eyeballs. 
Yeah, either way. Either way works for me. Okay. So watch. Every time you do a Newman projection, right? Let me just break these apart. Every time you do a Newman projection, you're always going to see the same thing in the middle. Okay. What changes is where those other atoms are. Got it? So I am here, okay? Right, I'm here looking at this, right? Right, I'm here and I'm gonna rotate myself over here now. Good? Where's my red hydrogen? Right, left, up, down, where are we? Straight up. Oops, I forgot to color code the rest of them. Let me go back here for a second. That one was black. This one will be yellow, right? Um, I guess it doesn't matter too much for that. But we'll do, uh, oh, this will make it a little bit easier. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the one in the front that's orange. We'll, we'll see why in a second here. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do that for now. Okay? Good? Okay. So where is my yellow? Left, right? Left. Left. Okay. And my black hydrogen off to the right. Okay. Good so far? With me on that? Feeling confident? <laughs> I'm modestly confident, Dr. Confident. H. Okay. Now we're taking care of the carbon in the front. Take care of the carbon in the front, then we have to look at the carbon in the back. Ooh. What do we start to notice now? In the same They're lined up. You guys with me on this? So I could go back and ask you, where is my green hydrogen? Up, down, left, or right? And you would say, oh. up. In fact, it'd be what? Directly. Right behind that red hydrogen. Everybody with me on this? Everybody see that? So how do we draw that? How can we possibly draw that on our piece of paper? What we do is we kind of put it a little bit just off to the left and to the right of what's in front of it. Okay? You guys with me on this? Of course we understand it's direct. We assume it to be directly behind it. But we just have to represent that so we put a little bit just off there so we can actually see it. Okay? Why don't we do it with the carbon? Why do we need to do it with the carbon? Okay, where's my blue hydrogen? It would be directly behind the the yellow one, right? All right, so it'd be off there a little bit. And where would my orange one be? Directly behind the black one there. You guys with me? Now tell me why the one on the left is. No, no, I was. I thought you wanted a picture of me. Doing a good job. All right. I'm so proud of Dr. H. Okay. Why is the one on the left better? Hmm? What do you mean by balance? Why would that matter? Hmm? Because chemistry, yeah. Does that have to do with the bond angles being as bad as possible? Bond, bond angles aren't changing in this. Somebody said something interesting back there. Electrons pushing against each other? Aha. Uh -huh. Whenever any chemist asks you a question and you have no idea where to start, what should you do? Get the hell away from him. I know. <laughs> Just run. What are you doing? Get out there. <laughs> there are two smart answers. The smart answers usually begin with sterics or electronics. Electronics is an argument that says the reason why this happens is because of where the electrons are and how they behave due to their location. You guys with me on this? Electronics is the argument that says electrons are doing chemistry. We need to study those. Got it? That's usually a good place to begin. Sterics is the reason why when you guys sat down, right, you'd like to have a little bit of elbow room next to you, okay? 
It's the reason why, aside from social norms, you guys don't sit in each, other, each other's laps to take notes in class, okay? That'd be a little bit awkward. You'd be crowding each other out, right? You are made out of molecules. Because your molecules don't like to sit on each other's laps, right, is the reason why you guys don't do that. Does that make sense? So now you can blame everything on your molecules. It's not, it's not me, it's not my personality, right? Do you guys get what I'm saying here? The reason why we, we have to discuss sterics is because stuff needs to get spread out. Hey, Uni, can you guys keep it down back there a little bit, please? Okay. We need to spread things out, okay? Does that sound reasonable? Okay, so tell me why. Why do I have to spread things out? I don't want to spread out, Dr. H. What does chemistry? Okay. What am I seeing when I see an atom? Yeah? Should an electron bond an electron? Or even two electrons? Electrons. Right? What makes the radius of something? Electrons. electrons. Okay. What happens when I try and put an electron next to another electron? They're not happy. They're going to repel each other. Got it? So what do they want to do? They're going to want to rotate away. Okay? That's the reason why. When we're looking at hydrogen, we just see, well, just a little H. Right? Isn't it nice? Isn't it cute? There it is. Okay? There is something called a van der Waal radius. Right? It is a representation, in a way, about how big the individual atoms are. Somebody mentioned it before about the radius of an atom, right? They were asking a question about it. We tend to lose that information because we just write carbon and hydrogen and all these kind of things. We have this, let's say, assumption that everything is of the same size. That's not the case, okay? Different atoms take up different amounts of space. Hydrogen, even though it's a small atom, takes up some space. Got it? So the reason what's happening here is because when the hydrogens are eclipsed, is what we would say, when they are perfectly aligned behind each other, when any atom is eclipsed, those electron clouds, those van der Waal radii, right, the sphere of the atom is starting to get a little bit too close to each other for comfort. Those electrons are going to want to spread apart. Okay. Here, just a second, please. So now I'm going to ask you a question. With respect to the carbon in the front and the carbon in the back, right? With respect to the carbon in the front and the carbon in the back, what's the maximum angle we can put in between those atoms, on the, or the, the hydrogen atoms? What's the angles here? No, 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 no. What's the angles between these two right here? Okay, we've got a 360 divided by 6. 60 degrees. Got it? You guys see what I'm saying with this, right? The maximum we can put in between there, this is 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60. Right, I'm not talking about between the different hydrogens themselves. That's still 109.5, right? But putting things 60 degrees apart, that's the maximum we can do, right? If we assume I drew a perfect 60 degrees here, right? if I start to rotate this more towards one direction, right? We decrease the interaction with the red, but we increase it with the black. You guys got it? You guys said, I'm, all right, I'm just imagining that we're kind of rotating these around. The kind of the happy space is 60 degrees apart, okay, with respect to the front to the back. Am I changing my bond angles? No, okay? What I am measuring is what's known as a dihedral angle, okay? A dihedral angle is a, uh, uh, we are measuring the angle between, okay? The angle between those two atoms there. Okay? So if you see dihedral angle or something like that, that's what they're talking about. Okay? It takes four atoms to define a dihedral angle. Really, 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 really important idea in the field of chemistry. Not so much in terms of what we're going to talk about this semester, but it's going to be important when we talk to us when we start to assess stability of different rotational isomers. Okay? Marie, do you have a question? I just want to know if you could define the van der Waal radius. It's just the radius of an atom, is what it is. Just the, okay. Mm -hmm. Andy, you have a question? Um, I was just curious. So, like the, the three hydrogens, I would assume those are 120 degrees between one another? No. 
the same? No. Okay. Do I change anything with my bond angles? Have I done anything to change no. the atoms? Mm -hmm. No. They're still all sp3 hybridized, tetrahedral, 109.5. Mm. Right? We draw them flat here, right? Just as a kind of a, let's say, a simplification of things. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, all three of these would be pointed at you. You could draw these accurately as three wedges coming towards you. Mm. You're not going to be incorrect with that. It just it gets a little bit awkward is what it is. Okay. Right? So we just assume that they're, we just draw them flat. They are not actually flat. We do not change any angles. Okay? Everybody with me? Got it? So what's the name of the game? The name of the game is spread things out as much as possible. Okay? So if you have one thing to remember from this, just try and spread things out. Minimize how many things are eclipsed. Good? Question. Obviously, we're dealing with the simplest of the simplest of the alkanes. Right? Ethane. Do we have things that are bigger than hydrogen that we'll see attached to carbon? Yes. Okay. I asked you guys the really tough questions in here, huh? <laughs> okay. So now that we've established that there can be things bigger than a hydrogen attached to a carbon, what do you think the rule is when we're dealing with figuring out which conform excuse me, which rotation is the most stable? We find the biggest thing and put them as far away as possible from each other. We have the biggest dihedral angle between the most sterically encumbering substituent. Okay? We, have, we put the biggest dihedral angle between the most sterically encumbering substituents. We put the biggest distance between the biggest things. That's all I'm saying. But I like to use big words because then you guys think I'm super smart, huh? Doesn't that work out? No. All right, I've got to change my tag. Okay? Everybody catch me on this. Put the biggest spacing between the biggest atoms. What's the biggest dihedral angle I have? Nope. 180. Nope. 180. 180. Everybody with me on this? Every, what's the maximum I can spread things out? The green one's as far away from the red one as you can get in terms of the dihedral angle. Got it? The green one is you know 60 from the, uh, from the yellow and 60 from the black one there. Got it? The maximum dihedral angle I could put in there is 180, though. Everybody see what I'm saying with this? So find your biggest thing, try and put them 180. That's all I'm telling you to do. Good? All right. So let's do all that. So we're going to really drastically change things up. You guys ready? What do I have here? Butane. Butane. Okay. I want you guys to draw the Newman projection. Oops. Forgot to put my eyeball there. Okay. Draw my Newman projection for butane. Careful. You know me. I have to make sure you guys are paying attention. You're just, I'm just telling you what you will have seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, down from the way that we have a here, sort of, but you know, you're basically looking like this, what you see right there. You're not here kind of looking at all that, right? So it's not straight. It is. You're always going to be straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll show you. 
So with these here, mm -hmm. you can just deviate those and see. Mm -hmm. right. For those, we don't have to do that kind of perspective. Just to kind of, otherwise it kind of gets a little bit messy and then we're dealing with that kind of we're looking at. So those, you can, if we can have those kind of more complex. I thought you just showed this. If you just draw this. The methyl groups at the end, the, the CH3s. Mm -hmm. You can just put them as like carbons for now and then we can fill that in, right? So. Oh, I'm afraid. Um, it's not stagnant. What's the thing in the straight line? I'm giving you the perspective to look at there, right? I would say that they have some kind of secure to it. You are standing there looking directly straight on it's those two carbons. Mm -hmm. I don't hear any indicators. Do you think that's second carbon? Mm -hmm. I think it would be a structure. So what's the first thing you should do when you're approaching a human projection? After you cry, then you... You should add the wedges and dashes into it, all right? Are you with me on this? What we're gonna do, there's that hydrogen off to the back, all right? Hydrogen off to the front, off to the back, off to the front. Good? When we have, let's say, more complex things, we can kind of abbreviate them. I'm not, I'm, we're not gonna draw out all the wedges and the dashes on those CH3s there, okay? So we're just gonna assess them as a singular CH3 entity, okay? I am looking down those two atoms right there. What do I see? Do I see anything different than what we did with the ethane? No, we just see a circle in the front, right? And directly behind that circle in the front, there is a, another one, got it? That's all there is. So I am here, I am stepping off to the right. That CH3 group, where is it? Up, down, left, right, where is it? Oh, it's to the right. The CH3 group, where is it? Up, down, left, right. Down. Straight down. Straight down. Oh. Okay. Hydrogen and red. Where are we? Up and to the right. Good? Mm-hmm. Alright, do the one in the back. some way of, you know, I assessing that you were just messing with those, right? Let's yeah, say label of HA or HB or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are always there. Yeah, but like, why is the Yeah. to the left, that, that doesn't matter. What you have here is the same as what I put. 
in reality, but you just have a different perspective to this. This is still to the right. This is still to the left. God's going to create the parts of the right? All you want to think about is the only difference between the Carbon next door is scary if it's made of the same flicker. Or is it freaking easy? It's not a question. This is far away from here. There's a degree angle, though. It's not good. It's not good. I don't know. It's all good. I don't know. Dr. H. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to sit in on your gen right? Is this a linear volume? Yeah. No. It's staggered. Is it scared? Is the carbon scared of the hydrogen? Is it scared of the hydrogen? I'm not sure what you're asking. Is uh, carbon has a little bit of stagger to them because of the. What's the angle? Ignoring the new projections, what's the angle of everything that's in there? 109.5. Am I changing the angle by drawing a movement projection? No. I just I thought that it was I thought that it was staying, but it's not. Oh. All we're doing is we're changing our perspective on things, right? That's why I say it's helpful to get like a, a, a model, yeah. right? Because you build the model, no matter how you rotate it or kick it or do whatever, right? It's always going to maintain the same shape. The only thing that changes is how we look at it, yeah. right? So remember, we're trying to represent three-dimensional molecules in a flat plane. We can't do that, right? You know, so we have to have some, let's say, uh, uh, assumptions that go with how we draw it, right? That's what I thought. So make sure that you connect one in the front, right? Because right now what you're telling me is there's six things coming off of the back carpet. So if you take a look at how I drew it, right? Three of them connect in the front, right? Yeah, that is important, right? Because what you're telling me is there's six things on the back, though, which isn't the case, right? Yeah. All righty, how many, how many got what I got up there? Is this any different? Than what we did with the ethane. It's not. Where's the only difference so far? Right here, right? We're intimidated a little bit. We got a CH3 group on there. Does anything change though? The basic setup of a Newman projection is always the same. Lock your perspective, draw what's on the front, draw what's on the back. Okay? Another people on there. <laughs> oh man, I'm popular today. All right. What's up? So, on an example, you show us like what perspective you yes. from. Yeah. If I ask the question, draw the movement projection, right? Oh, yeah. If I ask the question, which one of these is the better con you know, uh, rotational confirmer, then I expect you to tell me well, how you're assessing that, right? If you just want to draw, you'll show us where you want to Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Everybody with me on this? Okay, so we drew a thing. Are we done? Yeah. I hope so, right? <laughs> Is this the most stable rotation of butane? How would we assess that? 60 hmm? 60 so looking at the dihedral angles, okay? But not just looking, okay, well, everything's 60 degrees as we drew it, but specifically we have to look for what? The sterics, the biggest things furthest apart. What's bigger, a hydrogen or a CH3 group? CH3. Are they 180 degrees apart? Yes. So what's our assessment? Is this probably the most stable one? Yes. yes. Now remember, when we're talking about stability, we're talking about low energy, okay? Where things want to hang out. Molecules are lazy. They want to go the lowest energy possible, okay? That's a good thing. All right, you guys ready? A little bit more misery? I want you guys to rotate clockwise 60 degrees. Draw me the Newman projection, right? What we're gonna do is we're going to do a full 360 here, okay? We're gonna do a full 360 and rotate this molecule. Now watch, I need you guys to listen to me before you, you know, start cranking away here. I am rotating, okay, that bond that's in the middle there, right? That's what we're doing, the one that we're looking down. Am I changing the perspective on this? 
Why can I not change the perspective? Because then we kind of wreck what we're doing, right? So I'm telling you, I'm standing over here and it's just spinning around, okay? You guys are gonna think, well, you probably already do, right? But by the end of the semester, you guys are gonna think I'm a weirdo because I have like stupid things that I do, right? You guys are mostly there already, I can tell, right? If you guys ever stared at a ceiling fan before, right? <laughs> if you guys ever started blinking, right? And you can see the individual blink, don't give me that fan. <laughs> That's a fair face to make. Don't tell me that you guys haven't done that before, right? You see a, a ceiling fan, you start blinking, you can see the individual blades, right? That's what we're essentially doing here, right? This stuff is just spinning around, okay? And we're stopping it, right? We're blinking every 60 degrees. Got it? Mm. <laughs> All right, so rotate it 60 degrees clockwise. Hang on, I'm not done yet. How in the world are we going to draw this? Okay. When you rotate a bond, one stays in the same place and the other one rotates. You guys with me on this? Am I rotating both atoms? No, I'm, ro I'm spinning one of them around. You spin the one in the front or you spin the one in the back? Do you guys get why that's important to think about? Because what are we doing? We only rotate one of them, so the one that we pick that doesn't rotate always is gonna look the same. That's our fixed location. We're moving everything based off of that. Everybody follow along with what I'm saying here, right? Pick one, rotate it. Good? Does it matter if it's the one on the front or the one on the back? No, as long as you're consistent with what you're doing, okay? For what it's worth, I'm gonna rotate the one in the front you guys do whatever you want, one I'm going to rotate, and I can just go ahead and copy over exactly the one that doesn't move. You guys with me? So I'm, I'm just spinning around the one in the front. Okay, methyl group in the front, where is it now? All right, it's going to be sitting in front of that black hydrogen. You guys with me? Yeah. Okay, Wait, I heard 360 degrees. I heard Oh, no, no, no. I, we, we're going to rotate it. We're going to end up rotating 360 degrees 60 at a time. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's up? I'm confused. When you're rotating one part, you're saying you want to rotate one carbon knot. I'm rotating that bond, right? Oh. The, the, this, this little pink arrow that I'm talking about, that's what I'm spinning around there, right? So it's like the axle of a car or something. Why would it affect the second carbon? We are just locking our perspective on something, right? So we're holding the back one in place. I'm just going on the front, right? Got it? Okay, so. Huh? Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. Thank you. Where's my hydrogen in green? Up, right in front of the. Methyl group there, you guys with me? Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, that should be connecting. And my hydrogen in red, over the orange one, good? Mm -hmm. I want you guys to take this and draw it with the new wedge and dashes as we rotated it. Yeah? Should the red hydrogen be drawn above the orange one, or does that not matter? That really doesn't matter. Yeah, we're like I said, we're just trying to represent that they're on top of each other, right? We, we take some liberties with this. I'm not, that's not what I'm going to be looking for. I was like, oh, they, you know, right? <laughs> Technically, we probably should be consistent with it, but I'm not a good artist either, so. So take this, draw the new side on orientation for that. Ooh, that's tricky. Mm -hmm. 
So think about how we draw our Newmans. What we do is we lock our perspective and then rotate. If I'm asking you guys to go back, guess what you need to do? Lock your perspective and rotate. Got it? Start with what's up and what's down, what's left and what's right, whatever you want to do, and just rotate yourself. Okay? <laughs> Just for argument's sake, let's put in the rest of our stuff. What's the name of that molecule? Am I changing it in any way in terms of how atoms are connected, this kind of stuff? All we're doing is rotating. If I just ask you to draw the Lewis structure and you guys happen to draw this here, is that still correct? Yeah. Does the name change is what I'm asking you. Do you guys get what I mean with this? What I'm saying is, we represent, when we draw something, we try and draw the best representation <laughs> for it. We can draw different representations and it's still butane. Okay? How do we know when a molecule is the same or something different? Give it a name. Or assess if it's just a rotational conformer. Got it? All right, so uh, you guys have your two worksheets, quizzes, yada, 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 right? If you guys get done with those, what you can do is go through and draw the rest of our rotations here, okay? We did one, we're gonna have to rotate another 60, another 60, another 60, right, until we get back to where we started, okay? We'll pick this up on uh, Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Super. Yep. Are you